Come fellowship with us at the Love of Jesus Church of North North. Led by pastors Gavin and Tanya Taylor. Where our mission is to find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a problem and solve it. We give you glory and we give you honor. We magnify and adore you. We glorify you. We lift your name on high. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, all that you are yet to do. We are so grateful. We're thankful for your presence in this place. Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name, O oh God, that you will have your way in this place. Move by your spirit. Speak to each and every one of us. Let nobody leave this place the same. We are thankful and we're grateful for your goodness, your mercy, your unfailing love, for you are unfailing in your love. We are so thankful for you loving us, for you covering us, protecting us, watching over us. We're so thankful. We're so grateful for your love. We worship you and magnify you. We bless you. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify your holy name. We magnify you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing and yet to do. We are just so thankful and we're so grateful. We worship you. We magnify you. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Right where you are, come on, just, just, just lift your hands to the Lord and begin to worship him. I want to release a blessing over you upon your family, your friends. I just want you to lift your hands and I want you to receive it in this place even right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I decree over your life and I release over you. Even right now in Jesus' name, I decree over you that you are, you are blessed. You can't be cursed. And I decree over you that no weapon... No witchcraft, no voodoo, no sorcery, no evil intent, no purpose, plot, plan, or scheme of the enemy. No sickness, no infirmity, no disease, and no virus that is formed against you will be able to prosper. I decree and declare that, that you are blessed because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is every man that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham may come upon us all through Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare over your life that you are blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You are blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You are above only and not beneath the head and not the tail. You are the lender and not the borrower. Everything that you do, put your hands to. It shall prosper, flourish, grow, and be successful. I decree and declare over your life that you are like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Who brings forth fruit in its season. Who leaves do not wither, and whatever you do and whatever you shall put your hands to, it'll prosper in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. I prophesy over your life that this is your year for breakthroughs. This is your year for opportunities, for abundant harvests. This is your year to walk underneath an open heaven. God right now is preparing you for greatness. He is preparing you for breakthroughs, for wonders and surprises. He is preparing you for a great and mighty harvest so much so that if it was told you you wouldn't even believe it not decree over your life that you are blessed you can't be cursed in Jesus mighty and matchless name and now if you agree with that I just want you to give Jesus a great amen and give him a shout of praise in Jesus name come on give him a shout of praise in this place amen amen you can do better than that give him a shout of praise hallelujah we thank you Lord and we worship you we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Well, God bless you, everybody. Good evening. How you guys doing? You guys all right? All right now. You good? I know it's hot. Maybe we should put that AC up a little bit. I'm a little hot in here. You guys good? You hot? All right. You hot? No, nobody else is hot. I'm hot. Okay, we're good then. <laughs> All right, amen. God bless you, family. So good to see you. We greet you. If you're watching this video right now live, I ask you to do me a favor. Just like this video. Share it with somebody, especially somebody that's not saved or somebody that you want to hear the gospel that may be backslidden or has not heard the gospel. Share it with them so that they can get an opportunity. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity always to give their life to the Lord Jesus. 
So um, let's get right down to business. You guys ready? Anybody need a Bible? You guys are good to go. Everybody's good. All right. Turn your Bibles to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. We are going to get right down to business. And um, I'm going to start this message tonight. I'm going to see what happens, see if I'm able to get through it. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all of it, but um, Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Can you believe that? My God, Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. My God. So if I don't finish this tonight, I don't know if I'm going to do it on Sunday because I'm going to be preaching on the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and the uh, power that descended from on high on that beautiful day. So uh, I am going to, you know, get through as much of this as I can. If I can't finish it, I'll do it, I'll do it next Thursday. Amen. I'll finish it then. So uh, Joshua 1, verse 8. It says here, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. And, uh, you know, I want to say right now, this message is called, if I'm going to give it a title, to be successful, you must learn to think right, speak right, and do right, or act right. And so he begins with saying, this book of the law, you know, this Bible, these scriptures, it shall not depart from your mouth, or you should speak right. Okay? You should speak the word, not trash. So this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You're not going to let this, you're not going to let your fears cause you to let the book of the law depart out of your mouth. You're not going to let your, your doubt, your worry, your unbelief cause you to let the word of God stop coming out of your mouth. It says this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth or you should speak right. But you shall read and meditate on it day and night or you got to think right. If you're thinking on the word of God, instead of thinking about your problems, you'll be thinking right. Can you say amen? And it says, so that you may be careful to do everything, not just some things, not the things that you feel like doing. So that you may be careful to do in accordance with all that is written in it, or you must do or live right. See, if you live according to the word, you are do or you'll live right or you'll act right. And it says... And it's the only place that ever says this in the scriptures. For then you will make your way prosperous. See, you, you, oh, I thought that somebody else was going to prosper me. You will make your way prosperous. I thought that, you know, God was just going to wave his hands and I'd be prosperous. No, you're going to make your way prosperous if you will speak right, think right, and live right. You will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. How many of you want to be successful? Two of you? Okay. Everybody, right? If you want to be successful, you got to think right, you got to speak right, and you got to act right or live right. And I put here, see, if you want a life that's filled with God's success, you got to think right, you got to speak right, and you got to live right. With that being said, your success is dependent upon the word of God. You see, the word of God has to become more than just some other book to you. (laughs) You know, it just can't be some thing that you read whenever you get ready to. Got to be more than just some other book. It has to become your personal guide to success in every single area of your life. You got all these people reading the seven keys to success and ten keys to the breakthrough and all this other stuff, you know. Read the scriptures. That'll give you the success keys you're looking for. So you ain't got to read, you know, Oprah's Magazine and all that stuff. Thank God for that and all these other things for success keys. If you want success, read the scriptures. It says, I put here, when you begin to feel that way about the word of God, you'll read it, you'll study it, and you'll meditate on it every day. When you, when you really, you know, say that this is my personal guide to success, then you'll read it. You'll study it, and you'll meditate on it. It'll be your source for godly wisdom and how you govern your life on a daily basis. And I put here, see, the word of God contains everything that you need to uh, achieve success in life. Everything. In every single area of your life. Financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, every single area of your life, the scriptures cover for you to live a successful life in each and every area of your life. There is nothing that the scriptures don't cover. It is the key that unlocks every closed door. 
It has the ability to remove every obstacle from your path. And if you begin to read it every day, study it every day, meditate on it every day, then begin to speak it every day, and then begin to apply it to your life on a daily basis, it'll completely change your life for the better. And you will be on the road to success. Can you say amen? So let's start, you know, let's start placing ourselves on the road to success today. How about that? You guys want to get started with that? So number one, you must start thinking right. And you know, what's really important is, one of the most important things in terms of what you think is what you think about yourself. You know, that's a very important question, the way you feel about yourself, the way what you think about your personal uh, thought about yourself is so important. But in Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he, or so does he become. And I put it here, whatever you think you are, or whoever you view yourself to be, that is who you are, or that is what you'll become. Your personal thought of yourself. That's why your personal image of yourself is so important. If your personal view of yourself is negative, it has to be purified if you're ever going to walk in the fullness of what God has for you. And I put here, see, always remember that your thoughts primarily about yourself will either propel you forward, put you in neutral, or take you backwards in life. Your personal thought about yourself, who you are, and what you can accomplish. Those thoughts that you have about yourself will determine whether or not you'll go forward, whether or not you'll be parked in neutral, or whether or not you'll go backwards in life. It's important, therefore, for you to get control of your thoughts because you will never get beyond your thought life. You never get beyond it. Wherever your mind goes, your body will follow. So if you think, you know, I'm a success waiting to happen, you, you will, you'll be moving forward. If you think, I can't do that. I'm a failure. You know, you start thinking like that. If that's how you feel about yourself, if you think you're stupid, if you think that, you know, you, you can't become successful, I don't care what I tell you. If that's how you, what you feel about yourself, you'll never become successful. And that's why your thoughts about yourself have to be purified if they're negative. Come on, don't look at me like I'm crazy or stupid or something like that. You know, I'm, I'm, this, is, this is true stuff. You got to really, how, what do you think about yourself? How do you feel about yourself? And I put here, see, wherever your mind goes, that's where your body will follow. And bottom line is that's great if your mind is full of thoughts about success. But if your mind is full of thoughts about failure and defeat, your life, life is not going to be very enjoyable. So you're, you're, you have to really, you know, Get rid of that low self-esteem stuff. Get rid of, you know, those negative thoughts of what people said about you and stuff like that. Get rid of all that mess. If you ever want to propel yourself forward in life, you got people that's saved, they love Jesus, but their mind is full of thoughts of failure and defeat and worry and fear, you know, but they love God with all their heart. But in their mind, their personal view of themselves is not good. And so you need to understand that you are who God says you are. You know, you can do what the Bible says that you can do and what you can have what the Bible says you can have. Stop thinking that you can't and you'll be able to move forward in life. Got to think right. Got to start thinking right. So with that being said, you know, you need to understand this. The, the mind, your thought life, that's the battleground. That's where the great war is fought. It's fought in your mind. It's not fought in the streets. It's not fought with guns and knives. It's fought in your mind. That's where the devil is trying to live, in your mind. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5, it says there, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, they are not natural weapons. They're not knives and guns. They're not a fist. They're not carnal. They're not natural weapons but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it goes on to say, 
casting down imaginations or these thoughts, these images that you have in your mind, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You have thought you have thoughts in your mind that are trying to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. In other words, the knowledge of God is saying you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? And, and, and you have a thought in your mind that says you can't. And that thought is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. See, God is trying to give you thoughts, fresh thoughts about yourself. He's saying, he's saying you're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You know, you're a champion. All this thing. These are thoughts that God is trying to inject in you through the word of God. And then you have thoughts in your mind that's saying, I'm a loser. I'm a failure. I'm a nobody. And those thoughts are trying to exalt itself or get up higher in your mind than the word of God. And that's why it says you have to cast down imaginations and you have to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then it says you have to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, thoughts are trying to, you, get, you, you can't stop a thought from coming. But you can stop a thought from getting in. And that's why it says you have to bring it into captivity. In other words, you have to, you have to capture it. If a thought tries to get into your mind, it's not right. You have to capture it before it gets on the inside of you. You have to lock it up. You have to arrest that thought. You can't let those thoughts get in on the inside of you to make you think that you're nobody. You have to arrest that thought. So, bottom line is, again, in spiritual warfare, the main attack of the devil is against the believer's mind. If you can't control your thoughts, the devil's going to have a field day with you. If you can't control your thought life. He will play with your mind and have you worried about everything that may happen in your life. I didn't say that will, that may. His goal is to try to fill your mind with fear, doubt, worry, unbelief. Why? Because he knows that these things will keep you from receiving the promises of God. All of these different thoughts, right? He knows that fear works like faith in reverse. Just like faith will draw you to the things that you're believing for, fear will draw to you the things that you're in fear of. And we read that in the story of Job, right? Job said, the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. <laughs> That's why you have to put the helmet of salvation on to guard your mind against these evil attacks. Now, I've mentioned this before, but we must always remember that our fight is not with people. Our great fight is with the devil and within ourselves. Particularly, it's a battle that's going on in our minds. Now, see, if, I, if you listen to this tonight, you're going to get helped. If you'll, fo if you'll focus, you'll get help tonight. This is real key. In our minds, thoughts are gathering, trying to build strongholds. See, a stronghold is defined as a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. That's what a stronghold is. Strongholds are for the purpose of protecting something from attack. That's what the purpose of a stronghold is. This stronghold is what the devil is trying to build in your mind with thoughts. He's trying, see, you have to think of each thought as a brick. And every thought that he can get past you from bringing into captivity starts building this brick wall. And this brick wall is trying to protect your mind against the word of God. He's trying to poison you with his belief system and get you to receive his lies as truth that you subconsciously use to begin to defend against the word of God. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, again, each thought is like a brick that's being placed upon another brick or a thought that's being placed upon another thought. It's a wall of thoughts that is trying to be built in your mind. This wall of thoughts is trying to protect you against the truth of God's word. So if he can start, so all this time before you got saved, he's been building these walls. You're a loser. You're nobody. You're nothing. You're a failure. And it's built, every time you, get the, you take these thoughts, a, a wall is being built. 
And now when the word of God comes, it hits this brick wall and it can't, it can't get through. Because your mind is defending itself against the word of God. That's why the Bible says we got to pull down strongholds. That's what it's about. So you thought you're in there talking about, yeah, I'm pulling down strongholds. You, ain't need, you know, what is that? What, I'm pulling down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Okay, what is that? It's these wall of thoughts that's in your mind. Those are the strongholds that need to be brought down. And I put here, see, that's why people that aren't saved, they fight against the word of God so much. <laughs> they have formed a demonic belief system or strongholds, and these strongholds are protecting them from the truth of God's word. That's why you hear so many people try to convince themselves and others that the word of God is not authentic. These demonic strongholds are fighting against the truth. So when they hear something that clashes with their belief system, the stronghold begins to defend itself against it. That's why they, go, that's why they get so defensive. Because the stronghold is defending it. That's why they get upset. Because <laughs> we, we're just talking, right? We're just, here we are. We're just talking. And I say something you don't like. Now you're getting crazy. The stronghold is trying to defend itself against the word of I don't believe that. You know, because the stronghold is trying to defend itself. You know, you may say, you know, the Bible says, you know, you shouldn't get, have sex before you get married, right? <laughs> and people that believe that having sex is all right will immediately go on the defensive. Immediately. Because they have strongholds in their mind, and a stronghold is defending itself against the word of God. They'll start telling you, you can't believe that everything that that Bible says, you know, the Bible was written by man, all this other stuff, you know. <laughs> And everything else that they've ever heard. Because they're trying to defend itself against this belief system. The stronghold is defending this person from the truth of God's word. And you know what's amazing is this. You yourself, me, myself, as a man of God, as a woman of God, right? Have strongholds, right? Still in our mind that haven't been completely torn down. And see, that's why it's difficult for you to completely believe the word of God as you should. There are still partial strongholds of doubt that are there. Now, they may not be full walls anymore, but there's still some partial walls there that still need to be brought down. You talk to people, you know, well, they love God, you know. Well, you know you should give, you know. You should know you should tithe, you know. And the stronghold defends itself. I'm not giving that man my money, you know, whatever, you know. That stronghold, you know, that, that thing defends itself, you know. Or some particular part of the Bible that you just, you can't agree with yet. And you, you get hit with that and you're like, I don't believe that, you know. And you, I can show you here, this is what the scriptures say. But the stronghold is defending itself. And it's real quiet in here. Now, so what do we do? What do we do? Well, the bottom line is this. Only the truth of God's word will be able to defeat the lies of the devil and begin to bring these strongholds down. Now, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I'm reading the Amplified. It says, for the word of God, or the word that God speaks, is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of breath of life and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. So number one, the word of God is our only offensive weapon that's in the armor of God. It's the only thing that we have to defend or to fight against these strongholds, right? And we have to begin to hit these strongholds with the word of God. Now let me give you a better let me give you a better illustration. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. Now this is in the Amplified Classic Edition. And this and, and God says, "Is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test?" Then he says, "And like a hammer 
that breaks in pieces the rock of, mo of the most stubborn resistance. So he says, my word is like a fire, and it's like a hammer. Now, before I get to that, let me just say this. Now, the great danger of allowing strongholds to be built in your mind is that you'll begin to walk in the devil's lies. Again, the only thing that can tear down these strongholds or these walls of lies is to continually attack it with the truth of God's word. It has to be a continual attack. The word of God has the power to destroy the walls of the devil's lies that have been built up in your mind. And I see, that's why reading the word of God daily is so important. That's why listening to the word being ministered to you is so important. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's, that's what the, the, you know, the Greek says. It's a continual thing. It's not just hearing at one time. It's hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see, faith must keep coming into your mind. If faith released by the truth of God's word is continually hitting that stronghold created by the lies of the devil, that wall will eventually come down. Now, in the scripture, God gives us two metaphors concerning the truth of God's word. He says that the word is like fire and that it's like a hammer. As fire, the word of God burns up and consumes lies and error. It devours all things that are false. As a hammer, it begins to break down the strongholds of stubbornness and resistance. That's why you hear me saying certain key principles over and over and over again. I heard you, yeah, I heard pastors say that a thousand times. Well, you know why, I'm, why God has me saying it is because I'm hitting that stronghold. And one hit won't do it. Like, it's like me, like if I, if I punched a wall one time, it wouldn't fall down. But if I stayed in that area and I kept punching it, and I kept hitting it, and I kept hitting it, and I kept hitting it for a long period of time, eventually the wall's coming down. And that's what the word of God is like. It's like a hammer. It is hitting that wall of stubborn resistance. And one day, I might hit that wall in your mind, with the word of God, and it's going to come down, and you're going to be like, whoa, I never heard that before. <laughs> I said it like a thousand times. You'll be like, wow. You know? And it's like, wow, I got that. Well, I never, I never heard it. I never understood it like that before. That's because the stronghold was there. Now that it came down, the word of God can get through. That word of God got to keep hitting it. It's hitting in that spot. Hitting that spot. You know, first you were hearing it and you got mad when you heard it. You know, then you, then you heard it and you was like, ah, oh, you know, he keeps saying that, you know. And then eventually, boom, and it's like, I get it. And I put again, see, God is using me to swing the mighty hammer of God's word. To break down and to break up the strongholds that people have in their minds. That's why it's so important for people to you know, either come or tune into church and hear the gospel preached. You got to hear the word of God minister to you so that you can eventually it'll, you'll get it. Eventually, it'll break through that stronghold of lies and it'll get into your mind where real change can happen. The constant preaching of the word of God is the only thing that can, uh, can, that can destroy those strongholds that people have in their minds. They got to keep hitting it. They got to keep hitting it. Got to keep hitting it. Got to keep hitting it. You got to read it. You got to study it. You got to meditate on it. You got to hear it preached. Eventually, boom, that thing is coming down. So the word of God is like a hammer. See, we got we to gotta begin. See, our mind has to open up. See, if your mind, if you don't think right, if you don't think right, you'll never speak right. If you don't think right, you'll never speak right. If you don't think right, you'll never live right. You'll never act right. You'll never do right if you don't think right. It all, it all starts in your mind. That's where it all begins. If, if, if you don't have it there, you'll never have it out here. It'll never come here, and it'll never become an action. All right, let's move on. You guys getting something out of this tonight? This helping? I'm telling you, you know, this, this, this will change your life if you let it. And so I'll put here, if you begin to think right, then you'll begin to speak right. 
So your thoughts are connected to your heart, right? And your heart is connected to your mouth. And when I say your heart, I'm not talking about the organ. I'm talking about the inner, the innermost being, the center of yourself. Now, in Luke 6, 45, this is what Jesus says. He says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. And he says, for out of, of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. See, whatever is in your heart, whatever's on the inside of you, that's what your mouth is going to speak. And see, what's inside you is a byproduct of what your, your thoughts. Whatever you're thinking is going to be what gets on the inside. That's why, I says, that's why the Bible says you have to bring every thought into captivity. Because if you don't capture that thought, it'll get on the inside of you. It'll get into your heart. If you let thoughts go by without being checked, it'll get on the inside of you. And then whatever's on the inside of you, out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth's going to speak. It's going to be loosed out of your mouth. And I put here, whatever you're constantly thinking will become a deposit of truths or lies into your heart. Whatever you're thinking, it's a deposit. You know, it's like, you know, if I'm cooking something, whatever I put in there, that's what's going to be. See, if it ain't in the pot, it can't be stirred. Whatever's going, whatever I put in on the inside of that, that's what's going to be cooking on the inside of it. See, and, 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 and we are letting in either truths or lies on the inside of us. And that is what's brewing on the inside of us. And eventually, it's going to bubble over just like a boiling pot. And it boils over out of your mouth. Once it's in your heart, it will begin to come out of your mouth. With that being said, you will never be able to speak right if you don't think right. That's why your thought life is so important. Your thought life greatly affects the words that you speak. Now, we'll talk real quickly about the, the danger of those destructive words, right? And the reason why your thought, see, everything is connected. You got to think right in order to speak right. And in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 and 21, now I'm reading here in the Good News translation. And it says, you will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. What you say can preserve life or destroy it. So you must accept the consequences of your words. Wow. So now here you are thinking all of this trash about yourself, thinking all of this trash about your situation, thinking all of this trash about life, and, it's all, and all you're doing is depositing it on the inside of you. And then out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth's going to speak. So now, because if it's trash in, it's trash out. Now here you are talking trash. And now you are creating with those words, death or life. Now, listen to this. As I was writing this, I put here, see, as I'm writing this message, because <laughs> God gave it to me as I was putting it down. I said, as I'm writing this message, God gave me this. This is what I've got on my notes. Your words will become your roommate. That's what God said to me. Your words will become your roommate. Because it says there, you will have to live with the consequences of everything you say. Your words will move into your spiritual house with you and become your roommate. Therefore, my question is, what are you saying? And, what, and, and even furthermore, is that the roommate that you want to move into your house? Do you want to live with the consequences of those words? Is that what you want? I'm a failure. You want failure to move into your house? I'm, a, I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I can never seem to make it. Do you want to live with that? You want that moving into your house with you? I'm going to let that sit for a second. You, 
Do you want to live with that? So you have to live with the consequences of the words you speak. You start thinking all of this trash, that stuff going to start coming out your mouth, and you're going to have to live with that. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. And I put it here, your words possess the power of producing both blessings and cursings in your life. Again, because death and life is in the power of your tongue. You know, most people thought, you know, well, you know, I thought, I thought it was the devil. No, not the devil. I thought, I thought, I thought death and life was, you know, in the power of the devil being so mean and, and, and evil. No, it's in the power of your tongue. I thought, I thought it was God that, that, that controlled death and life. No, it's in the power of your tongue. Most people with their mouth destroy their future. We can use our lips to create an amazing life or to wreak havoc in it and destroy it. That's why it's important that we watch what we say. If you don't want it, don't speak it. But see, it begins with you thinking it. You got to stop thinking it so you can stop speaking it. If you want to live the good life, you got to learn to speak right things. Therefore, only say it if you really want it. You see, your words can either work for you or against you, and the devil knows that. That's why he tries to penetrate you with thoughts. See, the, the de all the devil can do is to try to Get a thought across. That's, that's it. That's it. He the devil, he can't, he can't trip you. You know, he can't kick you. He can't spit on you, you know. He can't hit you. He can, he, he, the devil is a ventriloquist. He throws his voice, try to make it think as you, and, and put, in, put these thoughts in your mind. Try to get you to receive it. That's all the devil does. That's why the Bible says that we got to put up the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The fiery darts of the wicked are thoughts that he's firing at you. And if you put the shield of faith up, which is the word of God, right? If you put the shield of faith up, it will quench those fiery darts. It will stop those thoughts from getting in. You have to protect yourself against those crazy thoughts. And if you'll protect yourself against those crazy thoughts, you will stop yourself from speaking crazy words. Thoughts unchecked become negative words. Now, again, the devil realizes he can't curse you, but he can use you to curse yourself with your words. He just needs to get you to agree with him by saying it. Jesus says in Matthew 6, he says, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? See, how do you take a thought? Saying. Take no thought, saying. See, if you take the thought, you'll say it. See, I know what thoughts you received by the words you speak. I know whether or not you're allowing the devil's lies to come into your mind or if you're allowing the truth of God's word to get on the inside of you, just by what you say. Just let me sit down with you for a few minutes, and I'll start listening to you talk. And you'll start, you'll confess whatever you believe. If he can get you to say that you're nothing, you'll start believing it. If he can get you to say that you'll never make it, you never will. He just needs you to say it. Why? Because you're the most believable person in your life. If you say it, you'll believe it, and then you'll start to live it. And again, that's why your personal thoughts about yourself is so important. I always tell this story, you know. I met this young lady, you know, and very beautiful young lady, and she, you know, she says to me, I think I'm ugly. You know, why, why would you think that? You know, why would you think that? You're beautiful, you know. You know, somebody that I really, you know, really liked, he told me I was ugly. And she received that. She allowed that thought to come on the inside of her. And I don't care what nobody tell her. 
no matter what she look like. She do all this stuff, try to make herself look beautiful, and she looks beautiful. And, but she'll tell you, I'm ugly. I don't care, you know. And she can't be convinced because she has received that about herself. So you're the most believable person in your life. I don't care what I tell you or somebody else tell you, if you don't believe that, it won't make no difference. And you'll never get beyond that thought of yourself. Man, it's real quiet in here, man. <laughs> real quiet. But I'm going to keep on going because I believe that, I'm, I'm, see, I'm hitting that stronghold. I'm, I'm bringing that wall down in, 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 our, in people's minds. All right. So now let's look at the same scripture in the Amplified. In the Amplified, this is what Proverbs 18, uh, 20, and 21 says. This is really good. A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. <laughs> he will be satisfied with the consequences of his words. And then it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Now, this is something else, man. Let me pull out a little bit out of this scripture. Is that a person's mouth and stomach will be filled with the fruit of their words. If those words are good, the mouth and stomach will be filled with a satisfying meal. But if those words are rotten, then the person will want to vomit up those words. My God. It says your stomach will be filled. You're going to eat, you're going to eat whatever you speak, whatever you're speaking, you're going to eat it. Either way, there will be consequences for those words. Either pleasant and satisfying consequences or sickness. <laughs> With that being said, would you like to eat a bowl of fresh fruit or rotten fruit? That's the decision that you make every time you speak. Am I going to eat a bowl of fresh fruit or a bowl of rotten ones? Every time you release a word, you're eating what you're speaking. You're the, your words are the reason for your life being healthy or for it being sick. Your words. If you're living a healthy spiritual life right now, it's, because, it's, it's, a, it's a great, greatly due to what you're speaking. If, you're, if your life is... Spiritual life is full of sickness and stuff like that. It's because of what you're speaking. All right, I'm going to get ready. I'm, I know I'm going to get ready to close. Don't worry about it. I'm going to get ready to close in a minute. Got everybody looking at me real strange tonight. Now, Proverbs 13, 3. I love this. It says, the one who guards his mouth. Thinking before he speaks protects his life. <laughs> the one who opens his lips wide and chatters without thinking comes to ruin. My God, man. That's in the Amplified, Proverbs 13, 3. The one who guards his mouth, right? How do you guard your mouth? Thinking before you speak. You guard your mouth by thinking. Do I want that? Do I want what, what I'm about to speak? Do I really want that? He who guards his mouth thinking before he speaks protects his life. And the one who opens his lips wide, chatters without thinking, comes to ruin. Woo! This is another scripture that teaches us just as how important it is to watch the things that you say. I said this a thousand times, but I'll say it again. Our words have creative power. God has given us power in our tongue. We're supposed to use that power to create a beautiful world, like the beautiful world that God created when he began to speak. See, he created a beautiful paradise when he spoke. He didn't agree with the situation. See, the Bible says when God got ready to start working, the earth was without form and void. See, if it, see, 
It takes imagination and vision, see, to be able to look at something that's a mess and be able to say, this is going to be awesome. If you have no imagination and vision, what you'll do is you'll curse it. You know, you'll, I can't believe this. Look at this. It's horrible, you know. So you look at your life right now in the, in the condition that it's in and say, it can never work. Look how horrible this is. Look at what a bad situation I'm in right now. How am I ever going to get out of this? You can, you, can, you, can, you can do that with your words. But when God saw the earth in a messed up, jacked up condition, he didn't agree with what he saw. He began to speak what he wanted. He said, let there be light. And there was light. <laughs> you know, and he started speaking to this, this horrible, jacked up place. And before you knew it, next thing you knew, the earth was a paradise. Now, your, your life may be jacked up right now, but if you keep speaking to it, if, if you keep planting the right seeds, sowing the right seeds into it, Eventually, it'll be a paradise. I said, see, you know, most of us use our words to tear down our beautiful world and others as well. Until we get control of our tongue, we will never get control over our life. Every time something good starts happening, we'll destroy it with the devastating power of negative words. So you can't, you can't allow negative words to start destroying what could be a beautiful world that you could live in. You got to start speaking to it. You know, Stop speaking trash about your relationship, your marriage, and stuff like that. Start speaking life to that thing. Stop talking trash about your finances. Stop talking trash about where you, all that stuff. If you speak life to it, eventually things will start changing for you. See, again, because you're, you're only, see, your thoughts will either propel you forward, put you in neutral, or send you back. See, it begins with your thoughts. Then it'll start coming out your mouth, and then you'll start acting on what you're speaking. You'll start living that out. Whatever you're speaking and whatever you're thinking, you'll start living that out. You'll start living like a failure. You'll start living like you're never going to make it. Or you'll start living like you're successful. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you start speaking, whatever you start thinking, and it starts coming out your mouth, you'll start, you'll start moving towards that. People wonder why they're failures, man. I, I listen to people talk sometimes, and I'm like, they ain't never going to make it. Because <laughs> the way they talk, they, 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 it's not possible for them to, to make it because of the way they speak. They, they, that's what they're thinking. That's what they're speaking. So that's what they're going to live out. I give them a million dollars right now, and they'll still fail because that's what they think about themselves. All right, man. All right. I, I, I guess I got to get ready to close here. I don't know if you guys are getting something out of this message tonight. I, I, I'm about to get ready to close here. But I'm telling you, man, you know, we got to get these things. We got to get these things under control. See, God, you know, God has, I, I was mentioning this on Sunday. I said, God has great plans for you. But those plans are just his intentions for you. See, they're not guarantees. They're plans. I can give you plans, you know, and you can say, I don't want those plans. <laughs> See, God got plans for you. And you can decide, I don't want those plans. Oh, I don't believe, I don't believe those plans. You know, I don't think that you can do that for me. Look at me. Who am I to receive something like that? You know, whatever, you know. Whatever your crazy thoughts are, you know. And you, and you could just, you know. God has these great plans, and he wants to do great things. And you can just decide, you know, I don't think that could happen for me. 
and you can ruin those plans. See, God's not going to make you, you know, he's not going to make you do it. You know, God, he's given us his word that is full of his promises. He's saying, this is what I'm intending for you. This is what I want for your life. This is what I, this is what I imagine for you. And you can either receive that or not. You can reject that and say, I don't believe that. And if you do, then those, those, those plans will not work for you. They will, those intentions that God has for you will not come to pass because you have decided that you don't believe that. You can't receive that. And again, see, that's why the word of God, that's why the word of God has to keep hitting that crazy stronghold like, like the hammer that it is and break down those walls of lies so that you can receive his plans for your life. And then you, one day you'll say, wow, you know. God, you really want that from me. I believe that. And once you do it, it'll start, things will start happening. Things will start working for you. You know, but that stronghold has to come down first. That stronghold, man, is, is that stronghold is something else. Man, you can hit that thing, you can hit that thing, you can hit that thing, and that thing, well, I watch some of those movies, and man, they come in, they got a battering ram. And they be trying to get into the stronghold. And they got this big door, and they got this, you know, the place is all, you know, a uh, uh, brick, you know. And they got this big door, and it has this big cross thing in back of it. And they, they come in with, the, they come in with the, uh, the battering ram, and they hitting that thing. And, they, and when I was watching this movie, they was up there, they were shooting them from the top, you know, trying to, you know, trying to kill them so that they couldn't get in. But they kept hitting that thing, man. You know, people falling out, dying and stuff like that, and they still hitting that thing. Eventually, they he hit that thing, you know, they was hitting the thing for a while, but eventually that door, that door came down. And that's what that's what that's what those, that's, that those thoughts are like in your mind. The word of God is hitting and it's like boing, boing, boing. You know, it's not it's not getting through. And it's hitting, and it's hitting, and it's hitting. And then you got this, then you got. These little crazy devils up there trying to shoot, you know, the word of God down, trying to stop it from getting in. <laughs> but the word of God keep hitting that thing. And then eventually, if that word keep coming. See, that's why the devil try to keep you, you know, you know, keep you out of church, keep you from watching it online. You know, you got something else to do. This happening, that happening because he's trying to stop you. He's trying to see that's that's the devil trying to stop you. From getting the that that battering ram hitting that you know that stronghold in your mind, he knows that that word of God keep hitting it. Eventually, that stronghold's coming down. And he don't want that to happen. He don't want that stronghold to come down. He wants that stronghold. He wants to try to reinforce that stronghold. So he'll keep selling his lies to you. The more lies you receive, the stronger that wall gets. All right. I think that's it for tonight. Go ahead and get on that piano. <laughs> we'll get ready to close. Now I got to finish this. You know, I talked about thinking right, speaking right, but now I gotta, I'm going to conclude with living right. I don't want to get started with it today because I don't have enough time. We got to close in a little bit, and I don't want to take advantage of the time. But, you know, and I don't want to shortchange it because this is, this is really important. So I'll pick up. If I don't, you know, may I pick up on it? Well, I'm definitely going to pick it up on it by next Thursday. How about that? So anyway, lift your hands to the Lord. Let's get ready to close. Hallelujah. Father, in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. We thank you for speaking to each and every one of us. Lord, I really believe that your people needed to hear this word tonight. And Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that everybody that's here under the sound of my voice, that they received it. I pray, Father, that they didn't just hear it and let it go in one ear and out the other. I'm praying in Jesus' name that I'm praying that it knocked down a brick, many bricks from that stronghold. If it didn't knock it all down, I'm praying that it knocked some bricks out of it. 
And I'm praying, Father, in Jesus' name, that as word of, the word of God keeps being ministered like this, that those strongholds, they're coming down. They will not be able to stop the people of God from receiving the word of God so that they can begin to prosper in their life. Everybody here said they want to be successful. And I know that in order for that to happen, they must think right, must speak right, must begin to act right, live right. But it starts in their thoughts. It starts with the way they think about themselves and their situation. And what thoughts they allow to come in. And then what begins to come out of their mouth. Because death and life is in the power of the tongue. And Father, we just want to thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you. We worship you for it. We give you all the praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, look, if you're listening tonight, you're watching, you've never given your life to Jesus and you want to do that, I want to pray for you tonight. And I want to close this service without giving you an opportunity to know the Lord. Or if you have you are backslidden and you know you are and you just want to get it right with God again, I want to pray for you. If that's you, I just want you to repeat this simple prayer after me and everybody here can do it with me. And we'll all do it together. But if you're watching online, I just want you to repeat this prayer. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you died for my sins. And you rose from the dead to make me right with God. Now, Heavenly Father, I accept the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Come into my heart. Help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's just give Jesus a praise. Amen, 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 amen. To God be the glory. Thank you for your word tonight. Amen, amen, amen. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to worship God with tithes, with offerings, special giving. You know, the Bible says to honor the Lord with your substance, the first fruits of all your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty, your presses, they'll burst out with new wine. You know, I'm just talking about strongholds, right? People got strongholds in their mind about giving, about tithing, about giving their offerings. You know, I had a stronghold in my mind at one time. <laughs> when I first heard about giving, I was like, you got to be crazy. I giving my money to nobody. <laughs> it was a stronghold, you know, and then eventually that stronghold was brought down. And when that stronghold was brought down and I, I understood the power of giving, my God, man, you know, now, you know, God has blessed me so much. I can't even, it just blows my mind. But I've been giving for a long time. My wife and I, we give big time. And because of that, God has blessed us like crazy. And, you know, the Bible says, you know, see, see, see the stronghold defends against it. But the word of God says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. In Proverbs 11, 24, 25. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> and it says the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. And those who help others are helped. See now, in your mind, that's trying to exalt itself against that word is, if I give, I'm not going to have enough. But see, the word of God says that when you're a giver, your world gets larger and larger. When you're stingy, your world will begin to get smaller and smaller. See, that's the truth of God's word that is fighting against that crazy stronghold of lies. Amen. So tithes and offerings, go in this envelope. You write a check. You write to the love of Jesus. You can give on your debit card. You can use our Givelify application at um, LO, uh, you can use Givelify at Love of Jesus of North North. You can download it on your phone. You can use our cash app at cash sign L-O-J-N-N. You can also give online at our website at www.lojnorthnork.org forward slash donate. And you can give that way as well. Also, you know, I, you know, I'm taking up 
special offering because we want to do, we want to buy a baptismal pool. And um, if we found one, it's going to cost us about $2,500. But you know what? What's that to God? But the bottom line is, you know, we want to do something that's not just beautiful for this place. We want to do something that's really godly. And um, we've, I'm starting to have people that really wanted to get baptized. And I had this, uh, this young girl that there, my mother told me, you know, she says, I need to get baptized immediately. And I was like, man, you know, I have no place to baptize somebody. You know, where are you going to go to baptize somebody now? But then God showed me get a baptismal pool. I found one online. It's beautiful. It's like a piece of furniture. And um, it, it'll, it'll go up against the wall. And it looks like it's, it's, it's wood on the outside. And it can be stained like cherry wood or oak wood or something like that. And it has a beautiful top on it. And then when you open it, it's a pool on the inside. And then I can run the water from our utility room and then plug it into the wall and the water heats up. <laughs> it's awesome. And I don't even have to get in the pool. The person could get in the pool and I could baptize them while I'm standing outside of the pool. <laughs> How awesome is that? So anyway, you know, but it's going to cost us like $2,500 now. But if you want to give towards that, see, if everybody does a little bit, it'll become a lot. And if you're going to give, uh, you know, use our Givelify, you can use our, now this is not tithes and offerings. This is something separate. You give your, you, you honor God with your tithes and offerings. And then this is a, a special love offering for that. And um, what you can do is just designate that on Givelify or on Cash App. You can just write a little note and say that it's for the baptismal pool. And then what we'll do is we'll separate it for that. But we're going to buy one of those and we're going to have a baptism, you know, prayerfully by the summertime. You know, a couple, of, a month or so from now, two months possibly, we'll be able to baptize people. I know at least five people that was in church wanted to be baptized. So we're going to do that. So if you want to give towards that, please do. All right. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. We're going to bless this offering. Amen. Stretch forth your hands. Let's bless this. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for everybody that gave to this offering. Father, bless your people. Open up for them the windows of heaven. Pour them out blessings that they don't even have room enough to receive. Rebuke the devour for their sake. Shower them with the blessings and with the favor of God. Give them more than enough where there is no lack. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Real quick, before we close, I wanted to give you a couple of updates. Our food pantry is 90% done at this point. Um, we are, you know, like I said, we purchased the two brand new six foot long deep freezers they're in. Um, we put up all of the shelving, all of that's in. And um, I ordered the air conditioner and is, is an air conditioner and a heater unit. So it has both, it has dual functions. It will come in this upcoming week. So by the next food pantry to be in. And today the coffee stand came in and um, put up a, you know, a coffee machine and for people to have tea, hot chocolate, coffee and stuff like that. The whole place is awesome. It's very, very beautiful now. And um, when the rest of that stuff come in, we'll be able to be finished. And um, we are working now on Pastor Tanya's food pantry, getting all of that done. That's gonna be real awesome. We are uh, supposed to be really clean, deep clean today, and then we're putting in the shelving, and then some, and then we're getting a, a freezer for there, and we're gonna make that place beautiful, and then both of our food pantries will be updated. And um, the other thing is media. Our media, we're still working on our media, we're gonna get lights now, and the lights are gonna be in the drop ceiling. And it's, you know, so that it'd be really nice, so we'll have like production quality, it's gonna be very beautiful. So we're working on that, you know, it's moving a little bit slow, but we're getting it together. We got almost everything together now, and we'll be able to go live simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube at the same time, and it's going to be great. So that's happening. Um, all right. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. All right. Everybody stand up on your feet. Let me bless you before we get out of here. Amen. Glory to God. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you, keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious, merciful, kind to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Grant you his holy peace in Jesus' matchless name. I want anybody to say, I'm blessed. 
and I can't be cursed in Jesus name the Lord bless you have a great evening you are blessed you can't be cursed Sunday morning we have service at 10 a.m. if you're watching online 10 30 we'll be going live with praise and worship if you want to come here come here at 10 o'clock we love you the Lord bless you have a great evening God bless you if you see someone in need, meet them where they at. If you see someone that's hurt, hit them where they at. If you ever see a problem, home, solve it with this fact. If the father put you through it, trust me, he gon' have your back. If you see someone in need, meet them where they at. If you see someone that's hurt, hit them where they at. If you ever see a problem, home, solve it with this fact. If the father put you through it, trust me, he gon' have your back. Rings. Come fellowship with us at the Love of Jesus Church of North Newark. Led by pastors Gavin and Tanya Taylor. Where our mission is to find a need and meet it. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a problem and solve it.